So a lot of people think to make a good living recruiting agents, you need to like recruit anybody that can, you know, (sighs) fog a mirror or, you know, (laughs) have a pulse. And uh, I'm here today with Melissa Hall of Hall Insurance Group. Say hello, Melissa. Hello, everyone. We're, we're going to kind of give you the uh, counterintuitive way to build an agency, at least counter to the prevailing thought of how you can build an agency that's not necessarily huge and humongous like the MLMs want you to think, but you can uh, put together a process of building a thoughtful agency with key people in place that is smaller, less stressful, and even more profitable potentially than what you would find from you know the cattle calls that most <laughs> MLM agencies teach us. So um, what we're going to be talking today is kind of Melissa's transition through this process from being a big agency to making that decision to transitioning to being a smaller agency and how she's seen so much more success out of that. We're going to definitely talk and hit on the points of what it's like to be a, uh, you know, within your first couple of years of starting your agency, what to expect, answering some major questions like, where do you find the good people at? Um, Do you start them full time, part time? Um, and so on. So if you're interested in recruiting and building an agency, this is going to be perfect for you. If you're thinking about doing this in the future and you want some like real perspective from somebody doing it, then you're going to definitely want to listen. So uh, Melissa, tell us a little about yourself, your business and and more about it. Sure, absolutely. So um, as always, again, thank you, David, for having me on. Yes, this is my second time on your show. <laughs> um, so um, for those of you all, who do not know me again, I'm Melissa D. Hall, okay, Um, you can go to Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A-D, Hall, H-A-L-L.com, to find out more about me. I am known as the voice of the female agent. Uh, I have been licensed since 2008 uh, in the insurance industry. I started off in the final expense arena, okay, Um, at 21 years old in college. That's how um, I originally got into it. Uh, from there, I, you know, I start like again, final expense, got into some um, uh, supplemental policies, supplemental health, you know, before the ACA came about, um, you know, been everything, started a call center there, transition here. Now I'm in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, went back to school, got my degree, um, went and worked a regular job for a while. And working that regular job, I was like, you know, just wanted another opportunity to sell insurance, okay? So I restarted my agency, the Hall Insurance Group here in Raleigh in 2017. Uh, For a short time, I did final expense, but very quickly, I got into Medicare and I fell in love, okay, with the whole Medicare market. Um, That's where I made my first six figures at in Medicare. And, you know, I just, I just love it. Okay. Uh, So I decided to start recruiting agencies after my first AEP. I was like, everybody needs to know about this. (laughs) And, um, you know, that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. So tell us about how you first initiated the process of building your agency, you know, kind of along the ways we're talking about going big and why you kind of had to change your heart and changed up your strategy to more of a uh, smaller agency strategy. Absolutely. So like I said, again, when I, um, you know, had my first AEP, I was like on fire. I was, I said, everybody needs to know about this. So I would just, you know, post on Facebook, um, you know, and I look back at those uh, videos now and I'm like, nobody took me seriously. I didn't even take myself seriously. <laughs> However, <laughs> I knew it worked, right? So um, posting on Facebook, networking with other um, insurance agents out there, um, different uh, insurance groups. And, um, you know, I was able to build a team. It was at least 10 agents, you know, all across the U.S. from like Oklahoma, um, Ohio, you know, Florida. Uh, It was and it was really like a mission. You know, we were really a a sisterhood, really. Um, so, you know, we did some APs together, you know, um, and I'm going to just say this, like, I remember our AP um, that we did together. I was getting up at 8 a.m. every morning. We would have a team call. And on that team call, some people wouldn't show up. 
Okay, because guess what? When you're dealing with independent agents, you got to deal with people who have other jobs, right? Or they might have a lot going on in their lives. And so it's a reason why they can't, um, you know, come on to the call or, or different things. It was always something like when they say that average agent writes four apps in AEP, I can see how that happens, you know, because it was just always another excuse you know right um the person who started so pumped up you know you get second week everything falls apart right and also too you know in seeing all of this happen I was like you know if this person was near me I could help them right I could train them better um I could you know you know maybe get them some leads, you know, because, because one thing, like I have, um, had an agent in Louisiana who I was working with, you know, their whole landscape in Louisiana, just even getting to a person's house is totally different than how it is in Raleigh. Okay. So when I was speaking to them, you know, it really kind of didn't work for them (laughs) what I was talking about, because that's not their landscape. Right. Uh, and so just with all that, you know, we did our AP, you know, some won, some didn't, you know, I was just like, you know what? I, I told them, you know, at the end, I said, you all, this is my last year doing this. This is my last year having agents who are, you know, not local and who are not full time. OK, because I knew because I knew what works. And also I looked at the amount of money I was making. You know, one thing about it um, on an agency side for Medicare, if, if your agents are independent, it ain't much money. OK, it's not. The override is very slim. It's very small. It's not like final expense or life insurance. It is really a volume based type of business. And so I looked at how much I made and then I looked at all the times I got up at eight o'clock in the morning. And I said, you know what, I can make more money doing this and having agents in my actual office. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I I think a lot of people don't understand this till they do it. Mm-hmm. There, there is, it is being independent is more difficult than it makes it out to be because oh, when you don't have a boss breathing down your back to get up and go to work, do this, do that, a lot of people, the vast majority of people, just kind of, you know, fall at their own whims of whatever they're going to do. You know, they, they, they are not motivated, self-motivated as much as you are. Right. Right. And yes, you could help them, like you said, but they're not there. You know, you got to let them do what they're going to do. And many times it's a lot less than what you do. Exactly. And it's like, you're committed, you know, the business works, right. Um, but them, they're still trying to, I guess, convince themselves or they might not be as motivated you know, as you. Right. So tell us, tell us kind of the, now you, you went from big Mm -hmm. to small and local. Mm -hmm. What advantages did you see by moving to a, a, a local strategy now taking agents and working in an office environment? What, what advantages did you see to your business and what advantages did you see to the agents? Sure. I mean, you know, just, you know, I really do enjoy uh, developing people. Okay. One of my best traits, and it also could be a flaw is that when I see a person, (laughs) I see the best in them. Right. Right. And so it has really allowed me to, by having an agent here in my office to really cultivate them. Okay. To really take them from a a dud to a stud. Okay. (laughs) And and I have, um, and you know, to really be able to be hands on with them. So that's number one. Okay. I've definitely been able to do that. Um, of course, you know, um, the money part of it, because I do pay them a salary. I furnish all their leads. Okay. We are hiring. So if you're local Raleigh, okay, we do do that. Um, you know, and so with that said, you know, the consistency, right there, they have to come to work here. Okay, so I have seen them produce consistently. Okay, Um, you know, and that lets me know, lets them know, hey, they can do it right. Turn them into, um, you know, Medicare experts. Okay, so it's it's been great. (laughs) What what do you think drives them to produce more consistently locally versus the agent that was national? Oh, absolutely. Well, accountability number one. Accountability. Um, training, 
okay? Because that's a big deal. It is a lot of people who um, don't have any training or the training that they do have, they, they really need somebody hands-on, okay? It is only so much that you can do via the web, right? Like it's nothing like your, your uh, manager actually going out with you and taking you out to prospect, okay? Doing that event side by side with you, okay? Um, or just being able to overhear your phone call, you know, and, um, you know, saving that customer, okay? Right, so there's just that, that more physicality of being there oh, amplifies absolutely. what's possible than oh, what you've seen absolutely. nationally where you're not. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, Medicare itself is a real uh, expertise. Okay. It is. It is a very, it is an expertise. It's not just something you learn in a crash course, you know, and I know people have courses out there, but it is a real, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's an expertise. So, and all the, all your agents now are full-time, correct? So they're fully full dedicated full-time. What, what what do you, you mentioned kind of when you're national, they had a mixture of full and part-time mm -hmm. kind of tell us now you don't, you don't hire part-time anymore, correct? No, absolutely not. Go into detail of what you think the shortcomings are when you hire a part-time agent on. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> Where do I start? Jeez. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I just go simply by this rule um, that my mentor, he, he said to me, and it's just true. A part-time agent takes as much energy as a full-time agent yeah true. it is true, true. Uh, yeah it is it is very true they take as much emotional energy because they still want to call you okay and tell you everything about them just like your full-time people uh, so that's number one and it's like you know as an agency owner it's like if you're doing this most more than likely you are full-time it's nothing more aggravating than you having to work around somebody else's schedule to help them make money right okay you know oh well you know you can't call them at this time because they're at their other job however this is your full-time job okay right. and right. then when they get out you know they have to go ahead deal with their kids or, or whatever it's like and, and it's you're always put as like the third choice okay? you're not as committed to you and then oh, exactly. no, what's the problem right yeah it, it is the problem because you're committed to them Right. Mm -hmm. You're committed to your your mission. So you always have to, quote unquote, be respectful or, or take a step back from that. And so I don't have to deal with none of that. You know, it's like, OK, you got a bunch of drunk. Move, move on. And, you know, <laughs> right. and just even from part time, but also even like, you know, I've tried to even have what I have going on here, you know, deal with some independent agents. And, um, you know, it's just the mix of having that independent agent and having my agents here who are dedicated every day yeah. seeing them come in and out and all that it's just it just doesn't mix well so, so you think it causes more problems than solves when you kind of have the mix there like that oh it does it costs a lot more problems to solve because it's like you know especially in this day and age everybody wants to be an entrepreneur OK, nobody, yeah. even though, hey, I'm paying people salaries and all that stuff like that. Nobody wants to really, you know, sit around and do that. You know, <laughs> everybody, you know, we're just in that generation. Everybody wants to do their own thing. You know, will it work out? Who cares? But that's just the idea, sure. you know. And so it just really it just the two it's two different cultures, two different mindsets. And it doesn't work. Yeah. So you you separate. Sounds like you separated out the Indies completely. Oh yeah, I did. I had, I had to separate it out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It makes mm -hmm. sense. Culture is everything, you know, and you got to protect it once you build it. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. We have a really good culture here at the Hall Insurance Group. You know, everybody here gets along. Um, one thing I do like about, you know, having my own agency, um, how I've built it is that it's not a whole lot of backbiting. Okay. Let's say, you know, if one of my, if one of my agents, um, you know, they have a call, right? And they miss the call or, or one of their clients calling. Guess what? Another one of their colleagues will help that customer form and give them a sale. Yeah. You know, mm. when you're a 1099 agent and you got to, you know, work for it, that doesn't happen, you right. know? Every man for no. themselves, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Every man for themselves, for sure. Right. So um, I'm going to hit on some questions here to kind of, again, part of this interview 
um, was kind of give that perspective to the aspiring agency owner, kind of what they're in for. <laughs> so yeah. I want to kind of build on that. What, what have you seen as being the advantages of building an agency instead of just being personally dedicated to face to, or, or to, to just, to just uh, personal production? The advantage of building of building agency, sure. So, of course, besides you know helping others, um, you know definitely being able to generate an income, and you haven't necessarily had to sell the client. Um, also, um, I would say having some time to myself, having more time to myself to pursue other interests. Uh, that's that's big for me since especially since I got started in this business so young you know it's other things that I want to do you know and that um, by having other people working for me that's making it possible okay um ex uh, I would say expanding my brand as well uh you know different people can meet people who you'll never meet right and so, um, you know, by hiring, I've been able to expand the Hall Insurance Group brand to people I've, I've never even met. Cool. Yeah. Do you think that every top producer automatically makes a great manager? No, Why's no, that? not at all. Not at all. And that's something, too, I would definitely say I've had to grow into, grow into because, you know, sometimes you know especially because I'm a super producer you know I I can outsell anybody anybody who's watching this just know Melissa Hall can sell better than you okay <laughs> <laughs> like like try me like I can right but that doesn't and it's like when you kind of have that naturally you know sometimes it can be hard to relate to people who don't have it naturally okay that's part of leadership right? A good leader is able to bring out things to willing participants, okay? So that's definitely, um, you know, something I've had to learn, right? Um, also to, you know, just, just everybody is different. And like I said, when you, when you are a top producer, you know, kind of not understanding that people are different. Um, you know, one thing about me, and I've definitely have to work on is putting everything in writing, OK, because I'll say something to people and I'm like, OK, you know, and then I'll come back and it's not done or they act like they didn't just hear what I said. And, and they really don't mean no harm because, you know, people are used to having everything in writing. You know, you, you're sure. dealing with employees now. You sometimes you just can't say stuff to people, you know, so building that, um, you know, when you're a business owner, because you're going now, because you're going from agent to business owner, it's a lot of different departments in um, a business, right? Naturally, as producers, we're good at the sales part, right? However, again, it's the operations part, right? There, um, you know, it's a lot of technical things that go into this. So like I operate a call center, right? So it's a lot of technical back ends of this, right? Um, it's a lot of tracking that goes into it. Um, HR that goes into this, accounting that goes into this, okay? Right. Um, complying with the state laws, you know, when you have employees, different types of insurances you have to have. You get what I'm saying? It's so many different, variables that aren't that are just outside of sales and that aren't taught even also to getting your people contracted okay that's a whole nother thing I you know in my type of how mine is set up I pay for everybody's uh, licenses CEs keeping track of everyone's all that that's that's you know it's it's, it's totally different and, and those aren't those things aren't taught some things right. are found out yeah. as you go. <laughs> right. So should an aspiring agency owner, in your opinion, as soon as they start their agency, should they stop selling and completely dedicate themselves to recruiting and building their team? Or should they still sell? What's your thoughts? Man, that's not even possible. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> stop and selling? Yeah, that's not, that's not even possible. You know, listen, I mean, <laughs> come, on. <laughs> come on now. I mean, no. <laughs> come on, baby. No, I know why. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't stop selling for four years. Okay. You know? 
Um, mm-hmm. Now, 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 why, why can't we just trust that everything will be all right? Why should we, what, what are some reasons you should keep selling besides making sure you get paid? <laughs> right. I, I mean, listen, my people do better when I'm selling with them. Mm. They do. They do. It's just the energy. Okay. I mean, I can, I can see it on paper from when I'm out there with them, from when I'm not there with them, the amount they produce. Okay. Um, you know, this year for AEP, right, we got a really slow start. Um, I was doing things, you know, to run the company because that is the number one thing you have to balance is right. running the company. Okay. And, um, you know, your production. Okay. So when AEP, even though, you know, they've been with me before for previous AEPs and things like that, um, I had some new people, whatever, kept telling them how it was, kept preaching to them, whatever. So AEP comes, they get in a slow start. And I'm like, you know, what's going on? You know, and I, like I said, I'm running the company. I'm, I'm doing a lot of different TV appearances, all that stuff like that, bringing in a business. I'm like, what's wrong with these people? I was like, you know what? They waiting for me. You know, it came to me. They're waiting for me. So, you know, hey, um, my appearances and stuff are over. So I, I started, you know, working out there with them in the sales pit, whatever. Their production shot up. Okay. Really? Oh, yeah. It shot up. It, it was great. Like, I'm talking about triple. Wow. You know, um, and I just think it was just a matter of sometimes they just, they got to see the head. They got to see the head do it. I don't know if they want to see I can I can sell. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's the competition, whatever. But it just they just got to it just work like that. You know, I think leading from the front is how I describe that. You know, it's like when they see you do it, it's motivating. Mm-hmm. It's everybody focused, follow yes. the leader type of stuff. So that's yes. that's cool. That's cool. So yeah. so you still you're still selling. You're still leading from the front on sales. OK, yes. Um. Let's see. Um, geez, where do you find good agents from? Any advice? Sure. I would say, so let me say this. This year, it has totally changed versus pre-COVID. Okay. okay. I, will, I will say that um, pre-COVID, you could go and put out, a, um, you know, a job posting, right? And I had tons of agents flock, okay, to my job postings, you know, getting a salary, things like that. Now that we're in COVID, right, the people that are licensed, that are working, they're making money, okay? They are. Um, so what, what does that what does it do? So we've kind of had to change our whole uh, strategy here. Okay, and now we're taking people who have never sold before. Okay, mm, okay. and having a process it's, it's taking longer, you know, to develop them. But, you know, that's kind of the person that you're looking for now, because people who have been licensed before or who are licensed, you know, they're making good money. They're doing all right. They're not trying to, you know, at least with my operation, like I said, I do sure. the whole salary thing, whatever. They know how much they can make. They ain't trying to, they ain't trying to do all that, you know. Even if, you know, them they're making fifty thousand dollars a year and have to spend uh twenty five thousand on leads and get chargebacks, they're not thinking like that. They're thinking, you know, I'm making forty k a year here, and I know how much this person is getting per application. So now, you know, I focus more on people who have never been licensed before and developing them. Do you think? And- if if you take now that you've done both, you take mm-hmm. that experience agent who's already licensed, they sold something before, and then you compare them to that new person you brought in. You got to do a lot more work, get them up and running. Well, if you had to choose one or the other, what type of agent would you choose to bring in if you could and why? The new one or the experienced one? Definitely the new one definitely the new one they don't have all the bad habits and all that stuff like that um they're easier to work with they're open you know definitely definitely that person um you know the thing is that you it, it, see 
the good thing about the season agent though is that they already know what to expect right okay sure, sure. um they know that they want to do sales right, right? <laughs> um they know what to expect from the client Okay, so that's the good thing because I actually have both in my office. Okay. I have a guy who's seasoned, he's been an agent before, you know. Um, it was just his first time doing Medicare Advantage, okay? right? So he was very easy to get up and running, okay? But you know, hey, they got their own habits, you know what I'm saying, that you got to deal with, sure. you know, because you know, especially like a, a life agent is very much transactional, right? right. However, a Medicare agent is 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 more service, okay? Right. Um, you, you're trying to keep these people on year after year. They're calling you, different things like that. You want to kind of get more into their family. You know, it's a different mindset, okay? Yeah, for sure. However, however, the person that I have here who started off, she started off as an appointment setter, okay? With her, it was just, I mean, it took her over a year to get licensed. Okay. Now we've changed that, you know, however, you know, you got to deal with people failing the test people, yeah. you know, cause, cause you know, like here in North Carolina, you have to get three licenses. You got to get your life. You got to get your health in a Medicare line of authority. You know, you got to take right. all these tests. It's, it's just like, you know, just a big old hassle and you have to coach a person all the way through that. Right. Then, then they got to learn, you know, Medicare which again is not something that happens overnight like i said she was working here a year so she kind of got her knowledge up you know just by helping us however now that she's on this side it's totally different you know so that's definitely been a learning curve as well so so advice for the aspiring agency builder when we're looking at people to bring on very important right your people are yeah. everything right Mm -hmm. what are you looking for besides being new or experienced what kind of character traits are you looking for in that and that sure. new recruit critical thinking number one okay um I, I you know they always say you know um, critical thinking is number one thing an employer wants i didn't get it until yes it is a lot of people here who cannot think their way out of a paper bag okay <laughs> but it is so critical thinking is number one um of course hustle okay you want people who are going to want to get it as much as you, a go-getter. You know, I definitely tell people, get the DISC assessment. You, you can do it for free. Find out if your people are a D, a I, a S, or a C. The Ds, the dominant, and the, they call it dominant, and I guess um, influential, the D and the I, those are personalities of salespeople. Okay. Okay. The S and the C, those are people who are very conscientious, very slow, very detail oriented. That is totally different than the uh, mindset of a salesperson. And so you got to know who you're working with. Right. Okay. Right. So definitely that's my advice. You know, the test is free. Okay. Um, also, too, um, people who are patient. Okay. You know, um, it's a lot of ups and downs in this business and it could in the learning curve, you know, could be a little bit much for some people. And so you got to have people who are willing to um, work through that. Okay. All right. Um, of course, people who are coachable as well, you know, people you can give direction to, you know, that's, that's very important, no matter how long they've been in sales. Okay. Who'll take, who'll take direction, <laughs> right? Who will, right. Yeah. Who, will, who will take direction and also people who will give to your organization, you know, is definitely exchange of energy here, you know, and you want people who will give ideas, you know, on how to make things better or, you know, just even with their feeling, you know, mm -hmm. you don't want people right. who just want to sit down and just shut up, you know, not say anything, you know, you don't want that. You want people who are going to give, you know, because you're going to give so much of, of yourself to them as well. Right, right. So last thing I want to talk about here, um, as, as you guys have heard, uh -huh. Melissa runs an, a Medicare focused agency, local in Raleigh. And uh -huh. uh, she does, I guess, what TV lead generation right yes M medicare mail is that what they call it around yes, yes, around them is. parts okay <laughs> Can you, so so you, you said you'd give us a little insight on kind of how how you do that because you know a lot of people are interested in tv and i bet they're really good quality leads can you tell us more about kind of what got you into tv and 
how you do it and kind of what the results you see. Oh, okay. Um, so, so basically, um, I do have a background. So that time I took off from the insurance or whatever, um, you know, I did, you know, go to New York for a while, be an actress, you know, I also, um, was a, I guess an improv comedian, all that stuff like that. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I do have a background in that. So, you know, I have a com television commercial, I'm Medicare Mail. It runs here in the Raleigh, Fayetteville area. Um, also, we're in Virginia now as well. And it's been going very well, very transformational for my agency. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it just works. The leads are very high quality. Uh, people definitely do um, start to get to know you. And it is very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but is the expense worth it i mean would you say it's it's been yeah, a absolutely. good investment it is a good it is a good investment um you know it, it is a very good investment and um you know I, definitely it's something um i plan to keep doing you know the thing is with this whole um medicare just insurance period right and we also found this out during this aep as well do I think a lot of I think definitely is from COVID and you know our mail system is messed up now from the old administration you know regardless of what side of the aisle you are on <laughs> when you have the sorters taken out it messes up the mail right sure. so you know the old way of sending out a thousand mailers okay and getting a two percent three percent response that is gone it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's non-existent you those know, are the days. <laughs> those are the days. And I think that's that's the number one thing I want to the message I want to kind of get out here to agency owners, to independent agents, that it is very difficult now to be an independent agent, to have your own agencies. Again, the, the, the days of paying four hundred and fifty dollars to drop a thousand leads and getting 20 or 30 back, that's gone. OK, the days of, you know, just, you know, being able to just, you know, have a presentation, you know, someplace about final expense or about Medicare, that's almost gone now, you know, especially with COVID, people are very critical about gathering um, with each other, right? Sure. Um, you know, you have to have some big bucks, okay? Like even here in the Medicare space, it's a lot of venture capital, you know, that has come into this space. You know, look, we see integrity has bought everybody, okay? Uh, you know, you have now Kroger's, right? They have their own Medicare aisle. Walmart <laughs> has their own agency, right? Right, right, that's right, yeah. You know, it's been, our average lead cost is $116. Yeah, I Okay, that. yeah, that's our average lead cost. So, and, and, and that's average around the industry, so if you think you're going to start in this business with a very limited budget, you can forget about it. It's, it's you know, I'm, I'm serious. Like the times have changed. So you definitely, you know, you got to have big pockets to play this game now. Right. For sure. Yeah. So it, when, when we think of the TV leads, is this, this something pretty much anybody can do in any market, right? If you go down to the right place, where, where, some basic advice on if an agent was interested, like where would you send them kind of to start the process? Oh, you would have to do an ultimate producer session with me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you go to Melissa. I do. I um I do have ultimate producer sessions. It's one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay. I also do have um a branding course as well. Okay, branding okay. one-on-one for the independent agent. Because it, listen, I didn't just go ahead and just go do this. This has been a progression. It's a lot of things that I've had in place. Again, I've been doing this since 2008. I've had my agency here in Raleigh since 2017. I have a foundation. I have a whole like intake process. And right. also um, people knew me, okay, before the commercial, okay? A lot of my commercial too is my current clients seeing me, okay? Right, right. Yep. So that reminds them, hey, they're with me, okay? Right. Also beforehand too, I did do radio as well right people heard me on that um as well so it was it was a lot and it's like 
you know, just just um, kind of giving y'all some insight into some things, right? Y'all got to stop thinking about marketing just as, you know, hey, okay, it's a commercial. Hey, it's a, it's a, a mailer you're sending out. It is a ecosystem, a marketing ecosystem. So what does that mean? They see me on, you know, their commercials, right? They see my face, my the, the mailers, right? in their in their in their mailbox right um they hear me on the radio okay then they see me doing long form content you know on cbs okay then they're hearing me call their phone you know checking up on them so they're really it's a whole marketing ecosystem it's right. not just you know one thing and that part makes it work okay right it's mm -hmm. a combination of everything basically exactly it really is it's a combination of everything Cool. Well, Melissa, I appreciate you being on here. If you would uh, tell our audience where they can learn more about you, where to go. Yeah, absolutely. Again, if you go to melissadhall.com forward slash resources, you can reach out to me there. I also have my own YouTube channel as well. Um, Melissa D. Hall. If you put in Melissa D. Hall insurance, I come up there. Uh, you know, hey, I have um, all types of, you know, freebies, courses, um, you know, I have courses on how to hire an appointment setter. I have courses on branding. I have courses on giving seminars. And also you could work with me one-on-one -on -one directly, the ultimate producer session for 90 minutes. And, you know, we can um, come up with a plan to make sure you win. Cool. So I'll put those links down in the uh, description box, Melissa. So just guys, yeah. just look down, hit the description box under this video you'll see the links directly lead there. And uh, I appreciate being here. It's been great. It, it is great, Dave. It's all, it is always a pleasure. Keep doing what you're doing for the industry. We appreciate you. Th thank you kindly. We'll see you around. Bye. Bye.